Have you made any investments in Bitcoin? So, I mean, I personally, I own Bitcoin in my hedge fund. I own Bitcoin in my fund. I own Bitcoin in my private account. Uh, it is a huge deal. It's a huge, huge, huge deal. I look at it as gold on the internet. Currency that's really going to work eventually? Well, I think it is working. The way in which Bitcoin and the blockchain are going to change the power structures in society in general. Um, and uh, there will be other currencies like it that may, may be even better. Um, but in the meantime, um, there's a big industry around Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. and, um, you know, people have made fortunes out of Bitcoin. Um, the thing about Bitcoin <laughs> that people don't really put together that I feel is we're moving into an inflationary environment. There is no Bitcoin company. There is no uh, Bitcoin building. There's even, not even a Bitcoin server anywhere. That uh, you don't have to ha be physically in the same place. And of course, for large transactions, currency can, can get pretty inconvenient. The internet did for information, Bitcoin is doing for money. Bitcoin, like gold, will still have value because of the, the blockchaining yeah. that goes on. And, uh, but the big thing that's really happened is that it's become more mainstream. You have, uh, you know, you have many more companies accepting it, many more companies using it in terms of retailers and things like that. So that's, it, it's become more mainstream. Therefore, it, it has become more correlated with the markets uh, rather than being, being inversely correlated. It's now uh, highly correlated with the One of the biggest Bitcoin um, supporters is Mark Andreessen, and he... he um, wrote in 2014 about how we can reinvent the entire thing with Bitcoin. And that thing that he is referring to is the entire financial system. Dream. Got a little Bitcoin love here on Trading Nation. We <laughs> like it. The cool thing about this show is we can talk about whatever we want. We talked about Bitcoin. I know a lot of people out there are fanatical. They don't just like it. They're fanatical about Bitcoin. Certainly it has been. America is fraud. The world is fraud. Banks are fraud. Central banks are fraud. We live in era of fraud. It's all based on fraud, and they get a percentage of the fraud. That's the business model. To suggest that there is any moral or ethical aspect to anything that's going on now is to be completely naive about the fact that we live in an era dominated by financial terrorists. 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 Jihadis of banking. They're here to kill you and themselves. They believe in an ideology, not the Koran, but Adam Smith, that they completely misread and interpret as something to justify their blowing themselves up. Janet Yellen's a terrorist! Mario Draghi's a terrorist! The Central Bank of Japan is a terrorist! These are the real terrorists! People with real lives. And it's real people, and Bitcoin has the power to undermine everything they're doing to people around the world. Most of the people who are on the sidelines not buying Bitcoin today will start to buy Bitcoin when it gets over a thousand. Mm. And then a greater percentage of people will definitely plow into Bitcoin when it starts to get over 10,000. Uh, not too, not too much, only one is enough. If everyone in this world, uh, people uh, just to go back by one Bitcoin, you know, the Bitcoin value go to the $1 million. Vinya does an excellent analysis. He predicts that Bitcoin will capture between 1% and 10% of the global Forex market, which implies a price of between $100,000 to $1 million per Bitcoin. So let's make a boat call here. In 10 years, what do you think Bitcoin will be worth? One Bitcoin. Between half a million dollars and a million dollars. A lot of people are just seeing the charts and thinking how high it'll go. What I'm doing is ca counting backwards. So, I mean, this is a transactional this is a transactional currency and it is a store of value as such it is a product and a service competing on a very tangible market for stores of value and for transactional currencies so what is the what is the size of that market right and this and is important how, and how much how big a market share can bitcoin realistically take within a, a uh, foreseeable time frame when you ask that question then you come up with a with a market cap of Bitcoin total, and then you divide that by the number of Bitcoin in circulation by that by your estimated time, and seeing how Chinese are buying Bitcoin like crazy, I actually had to adjust this number upwards. But then you come up with a number of about two to five million dollars okay. per Bitcoin. If you're new to Bitcoin, take your time to go out there and Google it and learn about it. It truly is one of the most important inventions in the history of humankind and certainly the most important invention since the internet. 
go out there, make a Bitcoin wallet, get involved, start using it, learn about all the positive ways in which this is going to improve the lives of every single person on the planet. Uh, get involved, do it today, it's going to help everybody. Right now we say we have a global economy, but I can't take a dollar and give it to you in the Netherlands and then you know what to do with it, right? You would have to go and change it to your native currency. Um, and when you kind of eliminate that step and I can just send you one form of payment and you can send me a product in a matter of seconds, that starts to change things from a, from a global perspective. You can buy Bitcoin at the Shell station. Check it out. Good. Got $2. Hit finish. Oh, $2 of Bitcoin. Just like that <laughs> from this machine. I just turned cash into digital currency. <laughs> to change the economic culture, Bitcoin could be a microeconomic miracle worker and it could be a macroeconomic wrecking ball.